Team Norway is getting sloppy. This past weekend in Lenzerheide at the BMW Biathlon World Cup, Norwegian athletes committed not one, but two safety violations. In today's video, I'm gonna go over what those safety violations were, explain some of the rules behind these safety violations, talk about the consequences that were imposed, and also give my take as to how I thought this whole situation was handled. How's it going, Biathlon fans? My name is Brian Halligan. This is my YouTube channel about Biathlon. Hit that subscribe button to help me clean that 5K target because I'd love to get to 5K subscribers by the end of the year. Now, this past week in Lenzerheide in the men's pursuit, coming into the last shooting stage with Johannes Tingis Bow, Sterla Holm Lagride, and Endra Stronheim, Endra ended up dropping his magazine during the reloading process and his magazine bounced off the mat over the firing line and into the range. Now, Andre thought quick. He took his skis off, got down, picked up his magazine, get back into position, skis on, loaded the magazine, and cleaned his targets and ultimately ended up coming in second place. Now, at first, this action was highly celebrated for his fast thinking and his ability to overcome this adversity to claim his first silver and his first podium on the World Cup. But when you actually look at it, his actions were very unsafe and broke a fundamental safety rule in biathlon. The edge of the shooting ramp in biathlon is known as the firing line. And when the range is open, no one is allowed to cross this line. In fact, in the biathlon rule book, it specifically states you're not allowed to do what he did. In rule 8.5.1, general shooting rules and regulations, there's a sentence that states, when the range is open for shooting, no one is permitted to be forward of that line, referring to the firing line. Now this rule is implemented for safety. Obviously we don't want people, spectators, officials, uh, broadcast crews, we don't want anyone crossing the firing line and going down range while people are shooting. This is an active shooting range with real bullets. There could be real consequences to health and safety should people just be willy-nilly crossing this line. But if that wasn't enough, he also kind of broke a second rule, depending on how you interpret his actions compared to the rule. Rule 8.3.2.1 states no removing of skis. Removal of one or both of skis while shooting, including training and zeroing, is prohibited. So technically, Andre did take his skis off so he could go down and pick up his magazine, but he did put his skis back on when it came time to shooting. So I'll let the lawyers interpret this rule and determine whether or not his actions actually violated this rule or not. Now, what should have happened? And now this is really important because with actions like these, it just leaves the door open for people to think that this type of action is okay back at their local club. So what should Andre have done? Well, there's actually even a rule for this <laughs> that outlines what he should have done should this have happened. In rule 8.6.1, misfires and lost rounds in magazines. Lost magazines may be replaced by competitors themselves if they are carrying spare rounds or magazines. If they are not carrying spare rounds or magazines, competitors may obtain replacement rounds or magazines from the range official by raising a hand and loudly saying ammunition. So basically you have to get the range officials attention and they will come over. They'll usually grab the equipment from the coach or off the spare rifle and bring it to you on the range. Then you can load it and continue to shoot. Now, Andre even mentioned that he thought about just raising his hand, but he was afraid that his coach wasn't going to be ready in time. And we know at the Biathlon World Cup level that every second matters. Now, in the competition rules 11.3.4Q, violating any shooting or safety regulations as defined in Article 8.5, is grounds for disqualification. So although it was highly celebrated on a lot of the biathlon world, you know, social media, I really wish they would have applied some sort of consequence to Stronsheim and unfortunately have to take his podium away because I think that this sets a really bad precedent for your local club junior and master skier who sees actions like this and just assumes it's okay to just kind of sneak over, reach over, etc. Now the second rule violation that happened this weekend was Sterla Holm Lagride. Last year's runner up and he was currently ranked third in the overall standings. We got news just before the mass start on Sunday that Sterla was not allowed to participate in the mass start due to a safety violation that happened back at the hotel room. Apparently a round went off while he was either cleaning or dry firing with his rifle. He literally shot his firearm back at the house. Now this is way, way scarier of a safety situation than what happened to Stronheim, but it just goes to show you that mistakes happen. Even the best in the world can make these mistakes. So it's really important to always, always, always 
make sure that your magazines are unloaded before you dry fire. Now, this is not the first time that situations like this have happened. The most notable example of this happening in the past was in 2009, when Andrea Henkel actually got disqualified from world championships for the exact same situation happening. She went to zero, zeroed her rifle, went back to the team changing room and was doing a little bit of dry fire before the race in the changing room and accidentally shot around through the wall and therefore was disqualified. Now, I'm glad that the IBU is putting their foot down on this situation and barring Ligrid to start. It doesn't matter that he is our overall runner up from last year or currently fighting for the overall this season. Season, it's really important that we take safety seriously and when stuff like this happens it's great that the IBU is implementing some sort of punishment because while the embarrassment and the guiltiness of having this situation occur is is one thing that Sterling is now dealing with it's another thing that the IBU is making sure that they are putting their foot down and they're showing the biathlon world that this is not okay. Now, back in 2009, when this happened to Hankel, she was back on the start line the next day and was able to participate again. So I totally expect Sterla to be back on the start line when the World Cup reconvenes after the new year break. But it just goes to show you that you have to be safe. You have to be careful because these are real firearms. There are real consequences. And thank God no one was injured back at the hotel when this incident happened. So just really make sure that you are being safe out there and we can participate and have fun in biathlon because that's what this is all about. It's about having fun, enjoying the competition. And I would hate to hear another athlete or coach or spectator or someone not even involved with the sport being injured as a result of a little bit of negligence. So here's a good reminder for all of us to be safe, happy, and healthy over this holiday break. And until next time, we'll see you.